Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, and I've bought myself 20 bonsai lotus lily seeds. Now, I've seen these on the TV and they look pretty good. Um, simple to germinate by the looks of things. All you've got to do is nip the end off, as you can see what I've done on some of them there. I've just taken the actual tips off with a pair of cutters, uh, which they suggest you do. And then that water then will go inside hydrate the seed sorry yeah hydrate the seed and it will start to grow again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these in here see how long it takes for them to germinate and I'll get back to you when they've just started to germinate and we can make a new a new bit of the video from there okay right guys what I've decided to do because of I, I put the link in the video of yesterday's video on the shrimp tank there um, about the bonsai uh, lotus lilies but what i thought i'd do you just saw the first part of that with the with the little seed pods in the uh, in my little bowl and what i was going to do i thought well i might as well just show you guys how to make up a super cheap little tiny bowl you can pick these bowls up at any store they use them for weddings and different things like that to put bouquets of flowers in and all that carry on and they're very very cheap um only about i think I only paid about three or four pounds for that one they're not a hundred percent you know with clarity and stuff but for this purpose where the majority of the plants are actually going to come out and the leaves are going to come out as well and these are really super little plants so i haven't come across them before but i thought i'd make a little video on just how easy they are to set up obviously you saw them in the shrimp video yesterday of them germinated you can see some of them in the background here over here and over here now they're slow slowly growing up as lilies do as like a spike to the surface and then when they get to the surface then or above the water those little discs open up and then later on i think it's within about a month or so we're going to get some flowers which is pretty cool and they're lovely little flowers different colors as well now i think when i ordered mine it was a mix of uh, pinks and reds i think there was a mauvey blue color beautiful colors and i'll get some of the seeds out now i've got some of the seeds in my in one of my little tanks next door here there they are all lovely germinated away and they literally within within a few days i got a snail on that one look at that little tiny bladder snail come on then i'm gonna let you go back in the tank off you get there you go and you can see we've got a nice little fresh shoot coming off the top there and then the roots will start coming out from around the top here and then go in what we're going to do we're just going to use all bulk, normal bog standard garden earth in there we're not going to have anything else in there it's just going to be plants and we can put some other little bits in there as well make it look nice okay right guys i've just been up the garden picked out a nice little tub of uh, of earth there now what we're going to do is we're just going to put that slowly and carefully when you put it in just give it a squeeze any little clumps powder it up then just pour it in and you want this garden soil i find is going to be better for this because obviously it's not like compost and things or peat which is going to float for a long long time this is going to stay submerged it's got little stones in it and different things and the roots are going to hold a lot better inside this believe it or not just like it would do in your garden pond with dust and things getting blown in there over time and you get that mulm on the bottom of your pond which is a bit more of a clay substitute as it because it's fine and it blows in over time and this will slowly settle so you've got to put I just crumble all the little bits up like this I've done this before with other plants and it looks really really good you see a lot of videos these days on YouTube about plants not using any pumps and filters and different things like that they've been going on for quite a long time and everyone seems to regurgitate the same thing I find these days but this is as simple as it gets really in the wild you don't get the plants needing filters and everything else the plants are the filters and this is all you need so we're going to put a good layer of that in there and nature will look after itself you look at ponds and rivers and things none of that has got a filter in it but obviously if you're stocking fish and things you're going to need a filter but if you 
if you haven't got fish or you maybe just want to put a couple of shrimps in or very very small fish look at that and it depends where you're viewing it from if you want to view something from like that you can also you can bank things right up like that you see and that will give that bowl a sense of depth okay and you can put plants up here or maybe little trees and things up here and you can create a little path of sand you can do anything you want with a little bowl like this and you can have a really awesome effect but what we're going to use and we're not going to do that we're going to keep this quite level as it were there i'll just scrub, push you down a bit so you can see a little bit better there you go and then what we're going to do we're going to add water now your first couple what i tend to do is get a, a tub or a jar of water i think what i might do is, is give one of these tanks I might give the crib tank there a little bit of a water change. So what I'll do is I'll get some airline and I'll put the airline onto the top of the ground there. I'll just grab some, put it in there and I'll show you how I do it. Right, okay guys, a little bit of airline like that. And all you do, obviously give it a quick suck and then squeeze the pipe. Like so. And see as you squeeze the pipe now, silicone tube, nothing's going to come out. And then... What we do is we just touch that into the ground and let that start to fill up all naturally like and you'll find that you're not going to disturb I'm just going to put that bowl there a minute just to hold that airline now that's just going to slowly absorb now into that ground you're not going to get it all cloudy and looking horrible like that so it's going to come up nice and clear and then we can plant our plants with the with our little tongs like that in a second okay okay guys I thought I would move into the kitchen bit bit better light in here and I've picked out a couple of little bits as well from my from my other tanks we've got some little dwarf sages there as well that with some nice little root systems on them and we got the lilies in there as well, the bonsai lilies, and we got some a little bit of Monte Carlo there as well, which has been growing really well in my shrimp tanks with no CO2 or anything like that. So I thought we'll pop it in there. Now, when you do put water in there, guys, it's going to go. It's, that's just a little bit cloudy, and you're going to get a little ring around the top of detritus and bits of like decay and plant matter and stuff, which is going to float up. Okay, but don't worry about that too much because you can always just go in there and just if you lower the water slightly, you'll find it will stick to the sides. And you can just wipe it off with a little cloth afterwards or you can just keep filling it up until it overflows and it will just take all the all that rubbish over the side okay in time but i wouldn't worry about it too much because we're going to start planting now i've got a nice little bit of elephant skin rock there as well from a previous aquarium which i thought was quite nice now these make the ideal window sills little aquariums so if we put that in now i'm not sure how much displacement is going to be here i might have to take this back out again but i think we're going to get away with it and then it's just a matter of turning it around and working out where exactly you want it to go and a little stone can look quite big in a in a small jar so but it's somewhere just slowly slowly squash that in there you go and you can see all the layer bubbles coming out of there it looks quite funky as well and what we can do is we're just going to plant these little plants just around the edge so we're going to put some little dwarf sages around I think I'll put one of the lilies here and here and one in the middle but obviously they're going to grow and come out the water so what you've got to be really careful guys is with these lilies is they are super fragile okay the stalks that come off of these as you can see I actually took the husks off of mine they do say nip the end off I did that but then they hydrated rehydrated sorry and then um, they split and they, they, they came out quite quickly after that. So you can see there's a nice growing leaf coming off of there. And there's another little one coming out of there. And that's where the roots are going to come from. So we've got to be super careful now with the tongs. So we don't want to put our hands in there too much. Grab your little lotus lily like that. And then just very slowly go in that way when you want to dig the hole. It's going to be very soft. And then just slowly just vibrate your hand as it were and you'll find that it'll just sink into that mud 
and then you can just push a little bit over there and then you're going to get him stuck in there like that you see and that's all you got to do it's going to it's going to mess up a little bit of the cloud the cloudiness is going to come back a little bit because obviously you're pushing things into the ground but not to worry too too much because it'll soon level out clear up within a day or so and then just rubble that one in there as well or wobble even and then straighten him up and those little roots are going to pop out there in no time at all okay and then we got one there that's just just sprouting that one that one was a little bit later as you can see and he's just starting to split they just look like big peanuts look at that fantastic stuff i say i've not heard of these before guys but uh so this is a first for me i've, I've grown the big lilies before but not these small ones so you rattle him in and just cover him up put him to bed and there you go now we've got these other little dwarf sages as well which we can put around obviously the ones that we've just put in are going to be for height but these little guys don't grow much bigger whoops than what they are there so same again just side to side very very gently you see the air coming out release those tweezers very carefully and then tuck everyone in like that okay that's the best way to do it any roots that are sticking out you can see if you like me and you're fussy just grab those roots and you can tuck them back in again or if you don't want to do that you can always snip them off with a pair of scissors okay and like i said guys you're going to get more more stuff that's going to rise up in there as well so not to worry about that too much and there you go guys all done all planted up we've got the monte carlo we've got the dwarf sage we've got the lilies in there those little bonsai little dwarf lilies that are going to come up and they're going to flower beautifully above there later on and um you're going to find with this with this garden earth you're going to get absolutely loads and loads of growth from these plants and i'm just going to leave mine in my kitchen window like that as you can see i've got some tomatoes going on in the background there as well and uh, all growing nice we've got some lovely hot weather i'm going to get that little ring of rubbish off the top of there we've still got little tiny clouds of that very very fine mud which has come up there off the bottom i think it looks quite cool actually it's like little bits of mist at the bottom and later on guys you'll be able to put shrimp in there you could put one or two shrimp in there for little caretakers okay you're not going to need a filter or anything like that in there as long as those plants are growing healthily and um and nice and strong and you give it the occasional little micro dosing of food you're going to be away in no time at all and the little shrimps will live in there quite happily just with regular sort of i don't know drop down to about that much of a of a water change some nice fresh water going back in and you'll have a beautiful little tank in your windowsill okay anyway guys hope you like that little video and as always you're all stars i'll leave the link to the seeds in the comments section below in case you guys want to pick some of these guys up they're really cheap they're only about three or four quid for about 20 seeds i think i'm not sure so you can buy a packet of those you can give some to your friends and tell them about this amazing channel and get some of those over to their window cells and they can have some fun with the kids as well watching these little le these little tiny lilies grow and watching the seeds germinate and everything it's really interesting and um give it a go anyway guys as always your stars love you loads take care and i'll see you on the next episode of mark's aquatics bye for now